touched on Stephen and Michael, just a little word on them, I suppose, you know, I mean, obviously, I've, I've, I know the story, but... Uh, I'm trying to think, the first time that I'd met them would have been in Franklin. I get moved, uh, ironically. Yeah. <clears throat> on the same time uh, as John says. Yeah. John came down for Franklin and the, the fucking security bus, and I met him in reception. <laughs> Never knew who he was. He knew, obviously, be seeing me where I'm going. And it was just a brief, fuck oh, yeah, the, the brothers are up there. So he's went in and he's allowed a phone call, isn't he? Guess who's coming up, you know what I mean? Fucking me. I got John's old cell. So it was like, I don't know if you get mine, but it was like for like, mm -hmm. prisoner for prisoner. Uh, so when I first went in, uh, first work contact was the uh, Manchester boys. Get your food and all the rest of it. And then, because Stephen and Michael were on the other side. Michael was up and my wing up the top. Stephen was on the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I was in a couple of days. Uh, I'd seen the big tables, and I, la I used to laugh. When I say laugh, I'm talking about no laughing at the screws, but thinking about people were on about me transferring for Scottish prison. I thought Belmarsh was good. There you go, that's how bad the English system is, right? I thought Belmarsh was good in comparison to the Dark Ages and yeah. the, the Scottish prison system, right? When I, when I found that you could cook and fucking all the rest, I hadn't seen these tables, <coughs> which was probably a row of five or six that I held four. You know, so the table would probably, no more than 10, no, no more than 12, no less than eight, if you're lucky. Uh, and as I said, I've seen the tables of four and the sheets put over them. And then I was asked, because they never knew what I looked like physically or what it is, so word starts spreading about and all the rest of it. There you go, there's a bit of tobacco for you. Uh, need in and done that. So I met Michael in the gym playing soft tennis. Met Stephen, he was in with Kevin Lane. Then punch bag and I'm on this bike uh, in first gear <laughs> exercise bike uh, but they were all fat 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 guys uh, ate well trained well uh, bit of chalk and cheese at time between you know you probably get that with brothers anyway but yeah. I, I could never really point one out and say one is better than another because when you're in a situation like that and you've had that hospitality that that was that was for both that just was good for one because if one didn't want you there you wouldn't be there you know so they ran a tight shot and that's that's things that I won't forget you know and there's a good link between the meals and how we met and uh, uh, Charlie Cray because I, I would I got mine first yeah after that, but uh, they ran, as I said, no, they ran a tight shop, and it was like a fucking home for home, really. Mm -hmm. The only problem was the distance for visits. Mm -hmm. So I used to save my up when you're back. Then people were saying, would you not get a transfer back to Scotland? And, and, and that kind of mentality, you need to be in this prison to look at that table, mm -hmm. to walk past, to go up another fucking kitchen yeah and, 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 and have your pasta and <laughs> all that done yeah. and, and you're thinking to go back into the dark ages the prison system to have what well, at best at best of six pot noodles yeah of different varieties and a bit of toast now and again mm. or queuing up to use a microwave it's been staying the time mm. you know so be easier for visits, no doubt, 100%. But what about the time you're not getting visits? What about the time you go to do your, do your prison thing? This, 
unfortunately, in comparison to Scottish penal system, wasn't it in time? Okay, what well, was the, 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 the deterrent value was? You can't go out and see your family, your relationship, your wife deteriorates. You know, you, they're, they're not, so you, you're stripped to your liberty, mm. your freedom. You get locked up between certain hours there and then. Yeah. That was a good harmony. It was a good run jail. Stephen and Michael never ran the jail. They, it, was a, it was a thing between the screws were happy that they were keeping the lid on things. Mm-hmm. So the, 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 it was a situation that the screws needed Steve, people like Stephen and Michael mm-hmm. to, to kind of keep a handle on things. And obviously putting a couple of tables together and knowing the governor's not coming up is all right, because the governor walks in and sees that, and he's like, fuck your head, but that's just one of these things, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And I remember us screwing the landing, looking over, and Stephen shouting up this catch. Is the fuck you? Yeah, I don't know. Is the Vandalay? The big job. Is the Vandalay? So we are starting coffee and all that. Right? And he's he's had Chinese guy cooking. Fucking, he's, is this fucking it? He's, he's shouting that way. You know, because his job is make sure this is on the table, wear all your plates, that and fucking fill your boots. <laughs> you know I mean? And that was that. Kebabs, fucking you know. up. Honestly. You'd have thought somebody phoned up for a delivery. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> and he top it off, Kevin Lane, uh, he shouts us after it. This was on a Friday, I remember it, it was a Friday night. Shouts us after it, going, What are you doing, me, man? I went, It's going to have a show at the computer, isn't it? There you go. Out for an hour. Where are we going? He's going, Any means? <laughs> Get fucking two liter, two two liters of hooch that the Irish fella showed him out there. So that's when I started the taxi service with Stephen. Uh, sometimes Michael as well, because some of these people in there drink were just big lumps. Mm-hmm. They get drunk, and the taxi service is <clears throat> we're on either side of them. Edging them along, so it's like a three man hang, like that camera to be getting into somebody's cell and go, bed, <laughs> door shut, because they're not getting, we'll put them in bed, because we made a mistake once, they just dumped the guy in the bed. Next thing he's out the landing, fuck it, you're there. Oh, oh dear me, door shut next thing. So, taxi job, that was for me, done that. Uh, so, any time I'm, I'm kind of near people that know them, I always pass by the guard, so. Yeah. Uh, top top guys. Good stuff. Um, Paul Massey in Paul, Man- Manchester, good friend of yours. Paul Massey, yeah. Uh, God rest him. I met him along with Rab Carruthers. And which would have been 1993, mm-hmm. 94. 1994, I think I met Paul for the first time. Uh, Rab got invited to go for a night out. Rab doesn't go for a night out. Uh, and the funny thing, I remember it was dark. And he knows about my driving skills. Wouldn't he, wouldn't he let me drive his E-type Jag? Got one of the security boys to drive it. So we're sitting, imagine the, the, the fucking scene. Right? Mm. I come down. To Manchester, to Glasgow, after spending a year after the trial. People think I went straight to Manchester after the trial, which isn't the case, mm-hmm. because I had two, uh, two friends that got killed, Bobby, uh, Bobby Glover and Joe Hanlon. Their wives were still there. Was, and there was loads of people outside the court mm-hmm. showing their support. But what if I had to just turn my heels and go off? Mm-hmm. No. So there was a time, and, and it was after, matter, matter of fact, I'll tell you the exact fucking day, it was after Thompson Sr. Uh, took heart of that and died. So it was after that. Mm-hmm. There was no... It would have been looked upon a different way if I left there and that, Steve. Yeah. You know, so... Uh, anyway, if you didn't see Rob, Rob goes to the... <laughs> I sat in the back of this fucking intake, Jack. 
uh, we go through a cut of street and it was like things that you see not at a watch coronation street Steve I've just got to put that in record I do do you see these wee streets yeah right Rob was saying we can buy this whole no, nobody stayed them they were all bolted up yeah buy this buy every house for a pound it was just so bad yeah <laughs> and the local pub we were going to for a for, to see to get a charge up first before we go that's the way like fucking an industrial estate mm-hmm. fucking built holes the, the, they're just sitting down Rob goes out of time that was a What's that one again? Aye, uh, that was that desert eagle. Fucking hell, just went off. That's <laughs> <laughs> an old place. <coughs> but on the way there, there are no street lights in this place either. And Rab always had uh, a pipe smoking the freebase coat on it. And it's, a, and it's a bad thing to do, <laughs> not only for your health, but at night time, in the back of your fucking car, because it lights up. Yeah. You know, just let a cigarette up. You had the fucking. Like, you may as well have a, have a torch. <laughs> so that was the thing. And Paul's club. When I say Paul's club, it's all Paul and his associates and, and partners that, that, that ran it, the Hacienda. Uh, and there was a, a good vibe about Manchester at that time and so forth. That was all about. It was kicking with the music scene, it was kicking with the uh, fashion scene. Sim- everything seems to be revolving on that it's like a hub yeah uh, and then it branched off into all the waves uh, or the UK and different things like that so I think the earliest time I would have saw Paul would have been in the Hacienda because he was very friendly with rap you know and, and there was a bit a bit of devilment between them uh, plus there was an older guy that I met through Paul later on, a guy called Ken Keaton. Right. Now Ken was a uh, uh, self-appointed community uh, informant, a snatcher, that had his own van, it was called Grasswatch, and used to patrol areas. But what they had a strong hand on is they'd never They'd light a bit of weed, a bit of smoke. Socially, I think coke was acceptable. The brown stuff was never acceptable. That was just a... You uh, smack, get whacked. That's, that's, that's the, the motto. Not so much the motto. Uh, no far off it, Steve. That's mm-hmm. just, just the way they ran their, ran their show. Uh, Paul was very, very uh, well got, very well got. Uh, the difficulty proceeding with explaining uh, quite a lot of other things that I'd like to explain. Mm. Uh, there's an ongoing case, but I'll leave it at this. Uh, Karma will always come back and haunt the people or persons responsible for doing this. And what they've got to ask themselves is a simple question. Did they think they'd get away with it? No, to be tried with a, with a jury or, or, or go and spend time in prison. But for pe- people who are not still active that are Paul's friends, that wants to do something about it. Yeah. Uh, that street justice, that will happen. And there's no time scale on it. And even if somebody, I was asked a question, what happens if the perpetrators get caught and they get put to jail? Paul wouldn't want them to spend a fucking an hour, a ten minutes, fight two seconds in a police station, never mind a jail. But Paul still got loads of friends in, in prison as well. So if somebody happened to get convicted, they will still get street justice in prison, which is called prison justice. Very similar to the Glenelg rules had done with the Nazis. So, uh, Paul was a sad loss. It, it did affect a lot, it surprised a lot of people. But again, we'll get something very similar. Uh, and I said, we'll keep it nice and, and uh, 
confidential about what I know, because what I know is known for the tape, but what I do know is it's very similar to a Judas factor. There's a Judas kiss involved in this, down the line. And, uh, it all comes out the wash, Steve, doesn't yeah. matter. Eventually. So I think today Paul Justice will come back and revisit that at some stage. Okay. Um, Mark Clinton. Mark Clinton. Mm-hmm. Absolute crackers. Nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute crackers. Nice guy. Mm-hmm. First met Mark Clinton when I got took back to Scotland for legal visits and to see my family. Mm-hmm. Now, because you're on security, because you're on Cat A, uh, the local prison don't have the facility for you. So I've already been on Cat Unofficially, they don't use cat A's in Scotland. Mm. They do and they don't, Steve, right? In England, they use it a bit more. Uh, I'd already been held in the segregation unit for the Thompson trial as a cat A. Yeah. Uh, so I know, I know where I'm going. I'm going back to the same surroundings. Although it's a punishment block, but you're not there for punishment. You're there because you need to break out a building, to break out of another fence. To... It's just a security risk. Yeah. That's all it was. So I've heard the kind of, I've been in there two days, and then the next thing, fucking, it's like that life of Brian when the Romans come through the door, <laughs> with a right shield, and I heard that the keys jingling. That was Mark shouting, Yeah, fucking ass, he'd just been dragged out. Of, I never knew who it was at the time. He's been dragged out the hall for smashing something, stabbing something, I can't remember what that's. And then the next thing is at the window, who's on fucking here? Who's on here? So I just left them. Passed the papers of it. Now, when I came up for visits, Steve, mm-hmm. I brought up my canteen stuff and my wages that I should have spent that fucking well first week. Mm-hmm. But the canteen, canteen stuff that I brought up was like food. Fucking normal stuff. And there, it's like, and on reception, you've got to be fucking kidding. Come on. The only that you've prevent you if you're preventing me to bring in this in, I've not came off the streets. I've came to a high security prison and a low security prison that you're questioning that the high security prison should find out where they buy their fruit food. And other somebody's what about these tins? Well, should you get a tin on them? Oh, they'll be back in your throat for it. No, they won't. That stops me feeding prison food. So they've relented. Um, fucking you know, but you, they're not getting kept in their cell. Mm. They'll be all right, yeah. So I find out, Mark, he's a bit of a part of merchant, right? Funny can, Celtic supporter, absolute crackers. And I said, screws don't like him. So he's always on the book around. Oh, he's always causing mischief, right? I thought, where have you got in there? The bastard has just dragged us at the second set of it. Buzzer. Spirit comes up. So I've got a wee parcel again, a bit of fruit, a bit of tobacco, fucking. So get out there and I'll come. Check it out. I said, there's nothing. You know, just that kind of subtle black humour sort of stuff. Would you think we are? I went, prison or something? Nah. I said, there it's there, he's just from the corner. I said, if you don't give him that, next time I get slopped to it, I'll leave it at his door. Right, one time, man. <laughs> the next thing, Mark's at the window. No fucking way. No fucking way. How did you get this? He thinks I'm getting treated like royalty. He doesn't. <laughs> so I've wound up a wee bit. Uh, about how... I've got a local school, I've worked in the shops. I <laughs> gave a list and I, I really can't sort of list it, what you're saying, anyway. I don't know, fuck you. I'm going to go that fucking gangster bastard up there, passing money out for screws to buy stuff. It was me. I bought it and then can't So I eventually met Mark when we got out, but he's a tricky, tricky customer. Uh, but one of the things about it was he, he, he started taking drugs. And be taking drugs, we were asked to do a, take part in a Donald McMacta documentary. 
And I was a bit concerned that Mark's going to be no shown in a good light because he's no really in a good place at that time. Yeah. Because he's, he drinks. When he's in prison, nice guy. I'm not saying when he's out and he's mad, but he's not a nice guy. He's just a likeable crackpot. Mm-hmm. Uh, people have put him down as Mary Ann Man and other. other, other. Where the fuck you met a guy in the the the, the Wendy House and and Berlin. Yeah. And there's a couple of times where I've met him. I've helped him out a few few times with some money, a couple of problems. But we discovered that we weren't really helping him out with, with money. We didn't know he was he was taking stuff. Mm. Hang on, don't mind talking about that, Steve, but. Obviously, it's personal problems that we don't want to broadcast. That mm. we don't need to broadcast. Everybody knows yeah. he was mad with it. But the whole point here is, my partner William ended up saying, "Listen, we're fucking. He's no gambling. He's on that, mm-hmm. on the run. So, so we put a stop to it. And we did. We kind of gradually moved away, and moved away, and moved away for Mark. But Mark done himself no favours. Because uh, he has a bit of a lined up merchant. And again, coming for Sunday, we experience like yourself on the doors. Mm-hmm. You'll understand the significance and what I'm going to say next. Mark went to a place called the Brazen Head. And the Brazen Head is an Irish theme pub. And up the stairs, I'm trying to laugh, is a place called Dirty Nellies. Right. Spelled. It used to be one in Newcastle, D U R T Y. That's the one, yeah. right? No, the guy that's up the stairs, the guy that's in the security in this place that's been allocated there by the security company. We were trying to get the doors, we were only going to get the doors. That turns out this boy has got a fucking tattoo on his hand, right hand Ulster. Right. So he's got a knife on him in the, in the pub. <laughs> Same, not for any trouble. Just came saying he finds out he's he's a ranger, and he would probably get fucking smashed in the toilets or something. Yeah. So he's got marks here, marks on that, and fuck knows what and all the rest of it. And the guy's talking about him. So Mark's admitted to three murders, no admitted to three murders, but more or less said he's the guy responsible and all the rest of it. So it comes as no shock. The guy who's got the knife, who's a steward, on the door, gets pulls it out during an altercation. I think somebody gets stabbed. Somebody might have even died through that, Steve. I'm not too sure what it is. Right. But the boy had the knife uh, because he was doing his job. He said he took it off. I can't remember what happened to him. I don't think a lot happened to him. But in order for him to get out, he gave. Uh, Mark Clinton's name to the cops for right. Billy McPhee, Gordon Ross, uh, I can't remember the other one, mm-hmm. three anyway. Uh, and that was part of the reason why uh, Mark Clinton got charged. Mm-hmm. For, I, I, an admission for him. That I know it was wrong. Mm. Why you say that to him? I thought no. <laughs> why? Why is a, a, a loyalist sympathizer in an Irish pub working for security and getting fucking eight quid an hour? <sighs> so there's a loads of things there. Mm. Uh, so with Mark getting a not guilty, they could, he could never proceed. They've got a time scale, right? And the time scale is the prosecution look because they've jumped the gun anyway. The fucking, they've charged them. They've done it back to front. What they should have got is the evidence first. Mm-hmm. And then belt on it. What they've done is they've jumped on what he said. And then by the time it goes to the first day of court, they, they don't get any success. What they're looking for is extensions. Give me an extension. Extension. Give me an extension. And this was to let them out to see if they're going to get them for anything. But Mark, it was just Mark. It was just going and having a drink and having a fucking fight and what he usually does. And then, uh, where the boy I got a phone call from? Need to see you, need to see you. 
uh, and I could tell his voice it was, it was urgent and when I went to see him he was smart looking right on the ball not been taking that had a wee drink you know and get another couple of drinks but no in and out the toilet sort of stuff mm-hmm. just maybe about an hour talk away talk away and what he told me was he got approached when Tam McGraw again we've got a crossover yeah he got approached with Tam McGraw on the basis that <clears throat> He wanted, I can't remember what the whole fucking hang I think there was a set-up offered for for me, through him, through Mark Clinton, on the basis that if he didn't do it, they will make sure that somebody will be going to court to say he's the guy. Whether it's bluff, whether it's whether it happened, whether... It, I've got any reason to doubt Mark Clinton for what he said. Mm-hmm. No reason to doubt him. Uh, so I thought... Fucking, <laughs> that is that rat. And it was serious. Because <coughs> we can click his finger and talk about Bradley and Henderson going to take Tam Beg and it like that. He'd be very foolish not to take that seriously. Mm-hmm. So that was something in which uh, I'd kind of looked on. That's what he was wanting to see me for. And that was the last I actually seen him. What about happened to him, do you know? Right? Mark, I think Mark kind of drifted away and ended up in and out of jail. And, mm-hmm. uh, I, th- I think he got himself in a lot of trouble with his own mm-hmm. mouth. But in saying that, I'm not going to criticise him. I can't like, go with the, the laughter that we had down there with him seeing this fruit and going, fuck off, and I think they've got screws underhand. And, uh, absolute crackers as well, but a nice yeah. guy. Mm-hmm. And so is his dad, old, old, old Jimmy. Mm-hmm. His dad's one of the old, old school. Dad's like my dad. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just all Calton boys and they've all came for there and they all stuck together. Mm-hmm. And that's... You mentioned McIntyre. Talk mm-hmm. about those two characters who you went on the camera with, I suppose, McIntyre and O'Mahony. Two, two different characters. And There's two different characters. The, the first one... With uh, Donald McIntyre, yeah, was a direct thing that was done through Reg, Reg McKay, mm-hmm. uh, purely on the basis that he's in Glasgow. And apparently, what he was intending to do was turn up outside my garage house with an ice cream van and turn the chimes on. And I thought, fucking fair play <laughs> if you're going to do that. I know a few people want to go and just bump the horn to see if he's coming out. Instead of looking through his file. Yeah. So it's a good stage prop, good for cameras and all the rest of it. He's out there against Tom, come out, you know, he's coming out. And so I thought, you'll not get very far with the with the time. So whatever his objectives and what he's trying to do, it was it was whatever you think you are, or whatever you think you're going, or whatever you're objective of this programme is going to be, you're not going to get there. Mm-hmm. Nobody doing things like that. It's a stunt. Mm-hmm. And then I reminded them that, listen, I've got a message to say to you. This was probably on the, the second or third visit. He went, yeah. I said, yeah, my old friend, Arthur Sutty, famous Chelsea supporter, had turned around and I asked me to tell you personally that they ain't forgot about you. And his face went like, Seriously, I went very seriously. Right, right, right. So, things went on and on. By that time, I think Reg had calmed him down and said, look, Paul, get you at it all the time. So, what we, what we got was an understanding on, we're not going to get shafted. Yeah. Uh, which is quite ironic since he got a fucking tattoo. Who's going to get a tattoo and go undercover? Mm-hmm. You know, so the whole point about it is, do you trust him? Do you know? I mean, the whole point about it is, if somebody asks you a question, like you're doing, you know, mm-hmm. if I'm in a position to answer it, I'll, I'll answer it. Yeah. If, if I'm not, I, I hopefully I'll give a reason, reasonable and rational enough explanation as to why I can't answer it. Mm-hmm. But the difference between uh, Donald McIntyre and his end product, bear in mind he was judged before it, 
about being undercover, dirty rat, uh, what you setting you up and all the rest of it. Never happened. Mm. But you could take all that and look at what O'Mahony done. We were never warned about him, apart from all the time. Did he turn out a rat? Of course he turned out a rat. He, he undercut everybody with, with, with Brian's work, put Brian more or less out of business. Uh, and deceived a lot of people, and I don't like that. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he's, he's, like a, he's like a box of fireworks. Do you bring out your best one? Oh, I'll ask for about 10 seconds. You know, and the box will become a novelty value after a while. It's people that are involved in investigator stuff that last the lifetime because they're interested in not only criminology, uh, the social uh, part of it as well, the sociology, the understanding of the, how many different parallel societies is there to Mr. and Mrs. Joe Public? Mm-hmm. You know, the, who convenes it? Who, who does the slant on the production? And the documentary that he got me, Ben O'Mahony got me into, uh, I would have to say the production team were brilliant. The, the production team were very, very good. And if I think, honestly, if they had known half the stuff about Mahoney, I don't think they'd have done the production mm. or they'd have last time to move away. You know, so out the two, you, you always get different things anyway. That's why there's a different agenda, a different end usage for uh, a product or, or somebody's views on how do we get this production to line up to, because this is where we're working anyway. Mm-hmm. Donald Martin Taiwan, he came in with all good intentions, he did something, looking for help off of Reg. Reg had more or less said to him, you get better than it this way. So he a lot of time, a lot of effort. So I think that's the way in which adopted the, the one that he'd done, I'm trying to remember the name of the production company now. Do you know it, Steve? With Donald? No, no, no. Uh, O'Mahony. Um, it's not something like Revolution Films. Revolution Films. Nice guys. Absolutely. Trevor Strain. Trevor, absolutely spot on. Uh, and then what he does is to squeeze the last bit of poison out of the air, uh, he actually uh, becomes subject matter himself. Yeah, an interview that he'd done with Judas Loban, William Loban, uh, that's currently been studied just now with a whole host of academics uh, that, were, uh, that are ex FBI and things like that. And I get this message through it, and it's a wee guy that does the Glasgow, the Glasgow crime. Uh, mm. Big guy, Jimmy. Sent, sent me a link on. He sent a copy of Logan's interview to these people in America, and they've come back with a whole variety of things. Whether it is or not, it's. You it's, just want to explain who he is? And it's Logan. Logan is somebody that I called uh, Judas because he was a lot. Bear in mind, uh, there'd been a lot of criticism aimed at my direction for pointing him out and saying he was the killer of Bob and Joe. Never said he was a killer of Bob and Joe. I've said as he was the last, the last person known to have phoned Bob and Joe. Mm-hmm. And his wife Elaine answered the phone, otherwise we wouldn't have known who it was. Mm-hmm. And if he's at such good of friends and all the rest of it, nothing on towards her, surely she went back and gave, his, gave Bobby's wife a wee cuddle. She was sorry to hear about your man and all the rest of it. But never, never done it because there was a stench about it. A bad, bad stench, and it's something in which he's making great play. The fact that uh, I've accused him of uh, the murder of Arthur Thompson Jr. Uh, he was never there, he was never involved in it. Mm-hmm. What we're doing, what we're doing was a whole list of people to fuck up the head of the, 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 the prosecution to go, Why is he on the list? <laughs> they're all on the list because I like to see if they're turning up yeah because this impeachment thing in Scotland is a bit unique Steve you don't need to answer mm. you know and people know you don't need to answer especially people have been through the, 
young offenders institution, they know what it is. You're asked a direct question, I don't want to answer it in case it may incriminate me. So you've not denied it. You've not admitted it either. Yeah. Didn't they take that much to go up and say, do you know what? That guy's facing this. Let's go and do it. None of them done it. Mm. Matter of fact, two sat in the fucking witness, two sat in the public gallery to hear the evidence, to get barred for being witnesses. 